All right, welcome back. We are here with the CEA, Corporate Esports Association, but for now, we are switching gears to the collegiate side. The collegiate side, the StarCraft II match. Uh, it is going to be <clears throat> UCSD, University of California, San Diego, Tritons versus UC Davis. And we've got a pretty cool match coming your way. Uh, first things first, want to... Uh, well, give a big thank you to CEA for having me on for this, as well as Gilded, the title sponsor, and Spotify for uh, helping to support. Uh, well, helping to support this initiative, and it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Really appreciated. Super duper cool. And uh, well, we are going to be getting into the matches pretty shortly. But first things first, I'm going to explain the format. Uh, CEA uses a best of five clan war style. Uh, but in addition to that, there is also a little bit of a twist. First of all, it is two 1v1s, two 2v2s, and then an ace match. Uh, so already two 2v2s there, very uh, spicy, I guess. Uh, and the way, that, uh, the way that things are designed, it's such that players, uh, teams, because of course, you know, organizing stuff with tests and everything for a collegiate team, it can be really tricky to get all your players together. Uh, so the way that they have arranged it is such that you can actually field a full team with just three players if you are, uh, well, if that's all you've got and or all you have for the week. So it's, it's already pretty cool, very flexible. <clears throat> uh, but then in addition, uh, there is some, some really cool stuff in the, uh, in the game. Uh, there's some pretty cool stuff in that as well. So there is, uh, for each and every map that is chosen, there is uh, a, an A map and a B map. Now, the A map is the default map, but the B map is... <clears throat> uh, the A map is the default map, but the B map is the map that you can uh, swap to. So, there is a pretty cool scenario where if you have, let's say, a player that's really good at Zerg and you want them on a specific map, but things are a little bit uh, awkward uh, in terms of, like, you, you don't have a Terran player to play a specific map, you can specifically put in that Zerg knowing that you will have the ability to swap them out. And uh, that's, a, that's a pretty cool scenario. That is a pretty cool scenario, if you ask me. And we're just going to make sure that we can get all of the players here. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so each team will have uh, two swaps. Uh, there is the uh, one swap for the 1v1 and one swap for the 2v2. So in theory, you could actually have all four maps swapped because the higher seeded team will swap second. So now you can't swap a map map back, but you can, uh, you know, make your decision on swaps based on what the first set of swaps are. Uh, <clears throat> so that's kind of neat, kind of neat, and it makes for a very uh, inventive uh, kind of different approach and, and I'm, I'm really excited to see how it's going to pan out throughout the season uh, we will be getting into uh, the first map in just a little bit here uh, first things first though let's talk about the two teams so uh, UCSD Tritons actually have uh, Vindicta on their uh, roster which is pretty crazy, pretty crazy. He is uh, obviously a very, very skilled player. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be really, really cool to see what he can do for his team. Uh, because you can field players multiple times, he can definitely be a very, very powerful weapon. Just 
messaging in the chat here. Uh, he can be a very powerful weapon for your team, for your squad, and uh, that's a pretty pretty cool thing. Okay, so it looks like uh, one of the teams actually hasn't started their classes yet. They don't start until uh, 1st of October. I did not know that. Now I know. Uh, so we're just uh, just organizing things here in this match, and we're going to be getting into game number one in just a little bit here uh, to talk about who the players are on each team. So first map is going to be Pillars of Gold. Uh, that one uh, was not swapped. Uh, second map is going to be uh, Imposter, which, by the way, is one of the Team Liquid map contest maps. Uh, that one is the swap. The original map for that one, oh, I'm putting myself on the spot, but here it is, was Death Aura. So, funnily enough, both players actually, or both teams, wanted to swap that one, uh, despite fielding a T and a Z, uh, Terran and a Zerg player. Uh, then for the first 2v2 map, uh, that one was swapped. It is going to be Ross Scallion. And then map four will be Oratorio. Oratorio? Yeah. Um, which is another 2v2 map. And then if it goes to the ace match, it will be on Eternal Empire. <clears throat> oh, derp, 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 derp. Gotta switch in the players. All right, here we go. <clears throat> it's going to be Pillars of Gold to start things off. And hopefully we've got a good match. Uh, of course, one of the players is a very skilled player in the form of uh, Vindicta. Is Vindicta good? Hey, he's at least top three. I like that. A lot of uh, fun, fun banter, fun wit going down in the chat. Always neat to see. All right, and here we go. Spawning up in the top left position of the map, representing UCSD and the, the Tritons, and also a member of Alpha X. It is one of the best Terran players in North America. Give it up for Vindicta. And his opponent being offered up like a lamb to the slaughter. It is the Blue Zerg player from UC Davis. Give it up for Dargon. And of course, that all California match. That is what we were looking for today. Uh, you know, this one may be a little bit of a mismatch in this first match, but uh, to be honest, it's, uh, eh, you know, only the only other map that Vindicta may play today is the ace match. Uh, he has only been selected once, so just probably just going to give his team a little boost, and then we'll see, uh, see from there. We are going to see Darkon go for a 16 pool here. Uh, trying to maybe get a little bit cheeky. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <clears throat> uh, he is going to be going for that hatch behind this and banking up a little bit of larva. Could we possibly see, let's say, six lings and maybe a roach warren? Maybe a roach warren coming down behind all this. Oh, a couple more drones starting. Okay, never mind. There we go. Drones starting up behind this. So, yeah, he's not going to bank a good number of lings and try and sneak around the map. Uh, but it is possible that uh, he may still try and get something done with this. No, he's not banking larva at all. Uh, so just getting uh, just getting a little bit, uh, a little bit of a safer opening. Now, uh, Vindicta did not go for a proxy racks here. Uh, he's, in fact, just opening standard. But uh, may elect to keep that Reaper at home upon scouting his opponent's, uh, his opponent's opening. 
No, looks like he's going to send that right across the map. SCV saw that there was no additional... Uh, uh, no additional lings or no lings at all popping out and well vindicta if you've ever seen him before he has some exquisite reaper micro and uh we'll have to see if darkon dargon can handle that or if it's going to be a little bit of a tough start for him already one of those lings getting low on hp but some pretty nice micro Ooh, great target fire from vindicta right there and uh he is uh gonna be able to pick off a couple of these zerglings <laughs> Ooh, nice snipe. Vindicta finding a lot of damage with this Reaper. Already picking off four Zerglings and a drone, and that is the power of this uh this very, very good micro we're seeing out of the Terran here. Uh he is gonna be popping in and grabbing another drone right there and getting on out. Great find. And look at what we see. On this side of the map. Oh, Vindicta bringing the memes here. He is going to be going for a ghost academy. A proxy ghost academy. And if if he didn't already win our hearts over with that Reaper Micro, he has won it over with that, that absolutely incredible build we're seeing coming out of him here. Uh, nice usage of this Marine to shove this back. And that is going to mean that he is not really going to be able to find what's going on. Uh, now, the Zerg player is going for a Roach Warren here. Is that going to be able to get anything done? The problem is that steady targeting on those ghosts, very, very effective against Roaches. Uh, unless there's a ton of Roaches, like a really overwhelming amount. And, well... You got to get an overwhelming amount. And also, you got to see this coming. Vindicta, he did put this uh, this Ghost Academy in a very difficult to spot location. Ooh, these queens. Oh, one of them already getting taken out. And now there's no defenses for these Hellions and Reaper. And Vindicta, he has only lost... What has he lost, actually? He has only lost the cost of a cancel for a uh, Supply Depot, maybe? And he is going to pick off that queen with another snipe. Ling's trying to pop out, trying to help out. Not going to be able to get anything done. 17 drones have gone down, and this has got to be it. There is just nothing that can hold on here. This is just going to be way too much damage. And Vindicta. Oh, Dargon offering up his drones, putting them all in the gas. And he's now going to pull them in to their death. And Vindicta is going to take a very clean, only losing two Hellions. He is going to take a very clean game, number one. Roaches trying to pop out and help, but already a snipe coming down on one of them. And, well, is this ghost even going to go down? No, it will not. Steady targeting, killing off the other one. Oh, man. What a... an absolutely brutal game one coming in. Vindicta trying... or, well, sorry, I should say Dargon trying his best, but Vindicta just showing... A very, very uh, high level of play, as we have come to expect from Vindicta. He is uh, he is a good good player. He is a really good player and very quick to the kill right there. Uh, almost mercifully uh, quick with that uh, with that victory there. <clears throat> and we're gonna get into a game in just a moment here that I have not had the opportunity to play yet. It is going to be Imposter. Imposter is going to be map number two uh, in this best of five. And it is going to be uh, a TVZ between Matt Fuss and Nigel. Matt Fuss and Nigel going to be coming up in a moment here. Wait, who is Matt Fuss? It's Matt Fuss. Oh, there we go. Perfect. He po uh, popped right in to the correct spot. And we're just going to have these players swap up the races there. <laughs> <clears throat> and... 
and a very, very exciting uh, exciting build coming out of Vindicta there. And we're going to be getting into game number two right away. Steady as she goes. <clears throat> it is going to be a TVZ, as mentioned, on the map, Imposter. Like I said, Imposter, one of those maps from the Team Liquid map contest. Some really awesome submissions from these guys. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to see what these two players do with this map. Will they have anything special prepared? Or is it just going to be, you know, more standard play? And we have spawning up in the top left, representing UCSD Tritons. It is the Red Terran player, Matt Fuss. And his opponent spawning down in the bottom right, representing SC Swarm and UC Davis. It is the Blue Zerg player, Nigel. <clears throat> so this is, uh, I'm just going to take a look at the map itself here. Uh, I like this aesthetically. Uh, very quick push paths with these acceleration zones. Oh my. You get across the map in a very, very quick setup. Now, the thing that makes this a problem is, of course, there's a lot of high ground around it. So tanks are going to be very, very powerful, very potent in these positions. You put a tank up here, it doesn't matter how fast you can run through here. You're, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a real bad time. Uh, quick SEV scout coming in from Matfuss. Wanted to make sure it looks like he's not getting early pulled. And in TVZ, that's not all that common. You, you don't often see uh, those early pool builds. It's a little bit rarer. So uh, not going to get too much valuable information. But that's that's fine. That's fine. He knows that there's no no cheese. And now he's going to go over and try and deny this third base. Uh, has fallen out of favor a little bit with Terran players. But it's still a very annoying tactic to deal with for the Zerg. <clears throat> now, what can we expect from the Terran player moving forward? Are we going to see a quick second gas and a 1-1-1 one, one, one follow-up? Or are we going to see maybe a very, very fast third command center? Uh, has been one of those things that's been a little bit more prevalent. <clears throat> uh, that that quick third command center. But, uh, you know, to each their own. To each their own. We'll see reactor. Boom. Starting up right there. Now, I mentioned a little bit about the uh, the California uh, kind of rivalry that exists. A uh, lot of very, very good players, very, very good teams from Southern California. And, of course, Vindicta is one of those best players in North America. He has made his way into uh, Challenger twice. Or, well, I guess uh, DreamHack Masters Playoffs is what we would call it. Uh, by the way, third base continuing to be denied here. It is a long distance between the natural and third. So this queen does have a long way to go. And, uh, oh, this reaper. Oh, it's getting very low on HP. Almost going down, but just barely surviving with 5 HP. And now this SCV, well, it is going to get pushed back. Or killed. Oh, it's going to get killed. Oh, sad SCV. F in chat for the SCV right there. Uh, looks like it is that third, uh, or that starport that's relatively quick second gas into the 111. Now, are we going to see these uh, buildings swap out? Or are we just going to see a maybe a Viking or a Liberator and a very quick stim? We'll see in just a moment. Ah, there we go. It's going to be a swap. Cloak Banshee or maybe a Battlecruiser build. Ooh. Yep, looks like it is going to be Banshee and does have the money for Cloak. Just needs to make the decision of whether or not he wants to go for that. Uh, behind all this, Roach Warren coming down for the Blue Zerg. And, well, upon seeing that there's a tech labbed starport, I would like to see him maybe shy away from going for a, uh, a Roach push here. Okay, there we go. Starts up a layer behind this. So, eh, not going to be anything too crazy just yet. Third command center does come down there. And what can we expect... 
Oh, man. Look at how fast these units are. Holy crap. They absolutely burst right through there. Uh, those Hellions with their plus versus light damage doing a lot against that Creep Tremor. And oh no, there's nothing on the defense for Nigel. And these Hellions are going to get into the natural. And they are going to have a field day. Drones are trying to be pulled, but they end up getting trapped and boxed into the natural. Target Fire does miss the drones, but already five of them have gone down. And well, that's actually not as bad as I expected here. And the Lings are going to pop out and clean this up. That was initially looking like it might have been catastrophic, but only six drones go down, and that's that's not the end of the world. Behind all this, double engineering bay. So we are going to be seeing Bio out of the Terran player. Uh, needs to throw down a couple more racks very shortly. Oh, look at this. We're going to be seeing Queen drop. <gasps> that is very cool. Nigel going to be busting it out here a little bit. And, well... He has a lot of supply right now, and a single Banshee without Cloak is going to have a really tough time dealing with this, uh, with this Queen Drop. And then there's actually nothing really on the ground to deal with this Ling Push, Ling Roach Ravager. Like I said, it's almost entirely that uh, one Banshee, and Nigel, he is looking really good right now. Transfuse coming in on that one queen that was injured. I was going to say, would love to see some creep drop. Maybe a bit of creep spread even. And there we go. Now he can uh, have these queens get a fair bit more maneuverability. First tank has popped out. But this is going to be a very tough defense for the Terran player. Corrosive Vile is going to take down the wall. And this Banshee will go down. The entire supply depot wall will go down as well. Ravagers are going to have an easy time taking care of that tank. And it will get Corrosive Vile down. Matt Fuss is in so much trouble right now. And he is just going to be forced to tap out in the face of this very aggressive build from... Nigel, and that is going to be an even scoreline at one apiece. You see Davis fighting back. And, well, let's get into the first 2v2 here. It is going to be Roscallion. And if it's anything like last week, it should be an absolute treat. Uh, the... Two. Did I spell that wrong? Ross Galleon. There we go. Perfect. Game heart. Uh, congratulations to Nigel right there with a very cutthroat build. And uh, yeah, really caught his opponent off guard. And we are going to be seeing it's Kandru and Sweet versus Tiki and Dargan. Kandru and Sweet versus Tiki and Dargan. All right, perfect. So it is going to be... Oh, Alucard. <laughs> How did you not know that Alucard was just Dracula backwards? Ridiculous. And uh, yeah, very cutthroat build coming out in that game number two. <clears throat> Awesome. We are getting into the game in just a moment. Tiki Dargan versus Watame Sweet. Uh, Watame Sweet looking to reclaim the initiative here with that PT setup. And Tiki Dargan looking to build off of that uh, momentum that they may have been able to build for themselves in the previous game. Now, who is going to be able to take it down? We will see in just a little bit here. All right. 
spawning up in the top right position of the map. It is the purple Protoss, Tiki. And the red Zerg, Dargan. Representing UC Davis. Looking to build on that momentum from the previous map. And their opponent spawning down in the bottom right. It is the blue Protoss player, Watami. And his ally, the Teal Terran, Sweet. Representing uh, UCSD Tritons. Yeah, so there's this weird bug where when you try and zoom in on a map in 2v2, sometimes it continues to uh, repeat the commands and other times it does not accept them. Uh, so important to note, there's only one Zerg player on this map. It is, of course, a shared base map. Uh, there is this little Reaper jump in point. Mass Reaper is a distinct possibility on this map. And a, a strong one at that. But we're probably not going to be seeing that. Ooh, looks like a gas steal coming down from Watame. And, well, it will be forced to be canceled. Dargan, oh, actually trapping the probe for a moment there. Oh, and Tiki smartly putting a probe on this gas. Not going to allow Watame to steal it once again. And, wow, both players from uh, UCSD going for a very, very bold uh, expansion. The hatch first from the Zerg. Definitely expected. But, well, as I say that, look at this. Both the uh, other players are also going for some quick expands. Not very 2v2-esque, if you ask me. Kind of shying away from the uh, the 2v2 meta of uh, beat each other to death with the first thing you can get your hands on, those first units you can build. Now, 2v2, for anyone who is unfamiliar, is a very volatile matchup there is a lot of points where uh, things become really difficult really strong really difficult to deal with i should say uh both protoss players by the way from each team are going to be going for that stargate opener now sweet is going to scout his opponent's stargate and i don't believe yeah no the other team has not yet star scouted the stargate of watame and that's going to be a big advantage. He can start up into that Phoenix production uh, right away. Ooh, but it's actually going to be an Oracle. Okay. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I think I would prefer to see the Phoenixes, especially with a Zerg Protoss team where uh, the Protoss or the Zerg player can potentially go mass mutas in tandem with those Phoenixes. But as I say that, it's actually going to be Tiki going for a Void Ray here. So, oh, okay, there we go. Watami now is going to go into Phoenix's behind us. Uh, looks like Sweet is going to be going a little bit of mech. Mech, of course, such a cost-efficient uh, composition. And some of the weaknesses of mech can be filled in by your ally. So in 2v2, mech can be a very, very potent composition. Oracle, though, it's going to get into the main base completely undetected and uncountered. Oh, man, that is so much damage already being done. Six worker kills for that Oracle. And, well, that is going to put uh, Tiki into a lot of trouble economically. Dargon, by the way. Oh, man. Meanwhile, Watame going to combo this with a double Adept into the natural, picking off even more probes. Tiki is in so much trouble right now. In fact, the, the 2v2 team... Oh, and the Adepts, they don't get cleaned up. They're going to pop into the main base, and they're going to pick off one, two, maybe three. Nope, not quite three more drones, but that was still very effective. And the harassment continues. Sweet is getting geared up with a Widow Mine drop. Behind all this, as I said, going mech. So anytime you get a lead with mech, it becomes so much more difficult to deal with. Oh, no, got to drop those Widow Mines. There we go. Is going to be popping those down into the main base, but... A little bit of a missed opportunity, I feel. Oh, this one Widow Mine tracking the probes. Nice split off at the last second. Actually causing a mind drag to kill off those um kill off those uh 
units right there. Kill off that widow or uh Wow. Medivac. <laughs> Still, though, everything is looking really nice for the Protoss Terran team. Tiki and Dargan have been knocked back on their heels a little bit, but they're not in an unrecoverable situation. But they're definitely behind. They need to either find some damage or find, uh, you know, really drone up for the Zerg player. Man, look at the economies right now. 30 probes and 31 workers. 31 drones to 48 probes and 46 SCVs. And, well... Already, Watame has a third Nexus halfway done. Uh, Oracle is going to be able to get away from this one Void Ray. And, oh man, this is this is problems. Uh, one thing that's really nice, Dargan already going up into 2-1 for his upgrades here. And he does have his tech. Oh, Ooh, nice uh, Spore and Queen combo. Should be able to keep this from getting too much done. But still... Oh, was that three kills or two? I can't check how many workers were killed. I just have to stay on top of it. Oh, Mass Phoenix is going to find one of these Void Rays and will force a recall out. One of those uh, Void Rays does escape, but the other one did go down, and that is expensive when you are already behind. It's expensive when you're not behind. Uh, but yeah, this is... Oh, Battle Mech it's going to be. Okay. So it's going to be Battle Mech... Plus Mass Phoenix. I don't think I've seen this before. And that is a really cool little setup. The Phoenixes are going to run uh, circles around these Void Rays. Ooh, one of the Phoenixes does get caught in the middle of the lift. But with so many Phoenixes and no bonus to uh, Armored, yeah, this becomes very difficult. Now, the Shield Battery does, of course, help anchor these Void Rays quite a bit. But look, one of those voids almost getting taken out, but the other one not quite. Meanwhile, though, the voids will pull back to the shield battery and turn around and then kill off one of those phoenixes. Not bad. Not bad from Tiki. And now that this second shield battery is finished, the one right in the mineral line, that will mean that he is safe to park those void rays right there. Oh. But this will make nowhere safe for the void rays. Anion Pulse Crystals. That phoenix range upgrade. So powerful. First battle mech squadron is going to be moving forward here. And this is going to be problems to deal with, I think. Queen already getting locked onto. The lift, maybe a little unnecessary, though, but it's fine. Uh, nice kill on that one creep tumor. And, oh, I love this. Locking onto the spores. One Void Ray. Man, they really can't fight without the uh, support of... Oh, my God. That's a lot of damage from uh, Meg Field Accelerator Cyclones to buildings. I'm always still astounded. Oh, we might be able to find a good number of probes as well as a potentially rallied Void Ray. Anion Pulse Crystals now finishing up. Look how quickly these Void Rays do go down. Meanwhile, the Magfield Accelerator uh, Cyclones with that Hellbat support. Well, the Hellbat Morph was a little bit ambitious. He's going to lose three Hellions, actually, as a result. But more than anything... Well, I, I don't like the concept of going in uh, with the Phoenixes uh, to lift until the void rays are down because every time he's uh he's lifting that one phoenix is suffering a lot of damage four void rays have gone down for just three phoenixes though even with that buff to the cost of void rays now costing significantly less this is still very very problematic tiki is really reeling in this game the zerg player has gone up to gotten up to a respectable supply but both watame and sweet are still very far ahead of their opponents and the void ray count continuing to be whittled down and now this might be the breaking point where there are just too many phoenixes and the shield battery is not going to be able to keep those units alive and tiki is down to just 34 supply it the only reason that well there's actually no he does have energy and there we go the lifts are going to come in getting some hydras and some queens and these phoenixes have run away with this game everything Really coming apart at the seams here for the Protoss Terran uh, combo here. Dargan, like I said, still pretty high in supply, but Sweet is still keeping him penned back and keeping him from focusing on helping out his teammate. And now Tiki, going to lose even more probes. This entire main mineral line, in fact, is going to be forfeit, and that is going to be it. GG is called from Tiki. And, well, Dargan, I don't think he wants to leave just yet. But, 
He's got to know that there is not a lot that can be done at this scenario. There we go. Dargan will tap out. Not going to try and 1v2 uh, two opponents that are already quite far ahead. And uh, well played. UC Davis putting themselves uh, up to one. And I I'll tell you what, Vindictus not playing in these 2v2s. Uh, this is their opportunity to take down the entire map right now, the entire match. If they can win uh, the second 2v2, they're just, they're just chilling. They are big chilling. And, uh, yeah, they're on the verge of putting this one away. Oh, wait, no. Can oh, okay. Wow, I had that backwards. So it's actually UCSD that has... Uh, Sweet and okay. Yeah, no, I had that backwards. So it's actually UCSD that is on the verge of putting this one away. Yep, that was completely backwards. All right, so we're going to be seeing uh, Watame once again. And this time he's going to be joined by Dr. Edition. And they are going to be going up against Nigel and Tiki. Nigel, who we did see winning that uh, previous, uh, previous game. Tiki, unfortunately, not able to, uh, not able to take that one down. Uh, yeah, Tiki suffering a little bit, actually, in that uh, that 2v2. Very difficult, difficult thing to deal with when you got Phoenixes constantly camping your production, and there's just, well, there's not a lot you can do. But uh, we're going to be getting into the second 2v2, the fourth map, potentially the last map in this, uh, in this whole thing. It's going to be a Zerg Protoss versus Zerg Protoss scenario. We're going to be having Watame and Dr. Edition for UCSD Tritons versus uh, Nigel and Tiki for the UC Davis team. And we're going to be getting into it in just a moment here. All right. So. Yes. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Spawning down in the bottom left position of Oratorio. It is the Blue Terran player, Watame. And the Teal Zerg player, Dr. Edition. Versus... Representing UCS, uh, UC Davis, the red Protoss player, Tiki. And the purple Zerg player, Nigel. Practicing my zooms. It's hard because sometimes it holds down the zoom button and sometimes it does not. Uh, right off the bat. This is a very large map, by the way. Very tall map. A uh, lot of, well, long long rush distance. Uh, it is a neat map because there is this in-base expansion, but you are actually separated from your ally. Now, you are joined through the back, so you can still help them without exposing yourself to, let's say, Zerglings. Uh, but it still is a little bit of a ways away. You can't immediately respond on a map where it's just a full shared base. It's it's kind of a kind of a hand holding base situation. But you know, there's just a little bit of distance. Like the relationship used to be a lot closer, but now there's just a little bit of that awkward distance. 
And uh, well, you're just going to be looking to overcome that. Uh, both players actually almost identically mirroring, or both teams, I should say, almost identically mirroring each other. Uh, of course, it makes a ton of sense for the Zerg to expand forward and the Protoss to take that back base. Uh, the only difference is that the Zerg player uh, for UC Davis has elected to take the uh, base kind of to the side. And that will mean that the Protoss player is going to have a slightly easier time expanding uh, a little bit later. But it's it's always going to... Actually, you know what? No, this, this might be a safer base to take as the Protoss third. Hmm. Yeah, I think it is, actually. Uh, the only problem is Reapers and Tanks, but there's no Terrans here. A uh, lot of rocks, by the way, that make things that were otherwise massive chokes only a little bit smaller this is still a pretty wide choke so if zerg uh, this feels like a very zerg centric map uh i feel like specifically this is a good zerg protoss map so both both teams i think making a strong choice to open uh or to choose a zerg protoss composition uh very very quick layer coming down from nigel by the way doctor edition not going to be going for that himself. Uh, going to be instead going for a quick lane speed and an overlord speed uh, opening. So going to be looking to get a very early scout. Tiki once again going to be opening up with a Void Ray here. Looks like a kind of a Ling scout coming in from Nigel here. A little bit tricky to see the colors of these two Zerglings, but there are four on each side. Really nice scout coming in from Nigel. Going to be able to find that it is, in fact, Phoenix from Watame. And, well, Doctor Edition now will kill off every single one of these Zerglings. So that's something. Uh, well, it's, it's nice, actually. It's very nice. One of these Zerglings with two kills. A little Predator right there. A little, little Strong Boy. Meanwhile, ooh, double Adept from Watame. Going to be getting into the natural again, but they're on move command. Oh, no. Now they will turn around and fight. They are going to be able to take down... Uh, potentially, yeah, it's going to be three drones, but that could have been so much worse for Nigel. Nigel, with some quick thinking, though, will get the, uh, will get the takedown there. Tiki this time, not going to be getting overrun by Phoenixes, I think, but, oh, wow, going to be going for a very quick fleet beacon. Did try and rush up to carriers last game, but was not able to do so. Was, uh, taken out by the mass Phoenix of uh of their opponent this adept well with a shield battery eventually finishing behind this should be able to hold oh these queens trying to get on the ramp nigel oh man getting distracted significantly here the wombo combo oracle draws all the queens into the main base and now the zerglings getting a lot of damage done they are gonna find so many of these drones oh my goodness that is really catastrophic for Nigel. Getting knocked down to just 25 drones and Dr. Edition and Watame with that combo. Looking really, really solid in game number four. And very close to taking this one down for their team. Watame going to be once again going for these Phoenixes. Double Stargate coming down. Plus one air weapons. And, well... Things were looking not too bad for the uh, Tiki Nigel team, but now they are in a really rough scenario. These Lings are going to be able to find this newest hatch, and they're going to get a lot of damage done on it. Roaches, uh, they do have speed. They will be able to, and plus one attack, actually. So they're actually going to be able to uh, two-shot these Zerglings. But still, Dr. Edition is doing an excellent job of keeping his opponent back. <laughs> Nigel, still in a ton of trouble economically. Ooh, Quick Mothership coming down from Tiki. Doctor Edition being very active with these Zerglings. Gonna be able to find a probe. Oh, yep, there we go. No, actually, it uh, gets itself nestled into a nice little corner right there. Man, speed rays are so crazy fast. But they don't even have their Flux Veins upgrade yet. They're already this quick. How much quicker can they be? Much, much quicker. Uh, Nigel doing a pretty good job of keeping his supply high, by the way. Uh, now, Watame and Dr. Edition, they are quite far ahead economically. Uh, Dr. Edition even going up to a fourth base right now. 
really, really solid play from the uh, the pink Zerg player. Uh, and in fact, he's going to be going up into a lurker play right here. Now, Tiki uh, with the mass void rays. Well, this is difficult to deal with. I, I will say that. It, it is really difficult to deal with mass void rays. Now, there is no uh, Anion Pulse Crystals just yet, I don't believe. Yeah, no, just the plus one attack. And going to be going up into a third Stargate even. Oh, damn. Oh, damn, oh, damn. Ooh, that's a good amount of Ling Bane getting ready to go on the other side of the map. Looks like uh, something just got picked off. Ooh, Void Rays do find a little bit. Oh, no, the Mothership is on its own, but there's a lot of cannons here. Battery Overcharge is going to be able to keep that alive. That was a lot of Phoenixes that just went down. Meanwhile, Ling Bane from Doctor Edition, not going to be able to get too much done at all. Four Phoenixes and two Oracles have gone down. No air units yet for Tiki. Now, Tiki has lost 10 probes, uh, so he's in some trouble. Mothership. Oh, well, it looks like that Overlord is going to be allowed to live for the moment. But it looks like we're going to see a Void Ray Roach Ravager Mothership push. This is super funny to see. And, well, oh, these Lurkers not quite finished in time. A couple of them will get taken out. The Phoenixes trying to fight. But this is just... I don't think this is enough Phoenixes. Oh, maybe it is, though. Oh, man, there was actually not that many Void Rays. And now the Mothership will get cleaned up. That was actually definitely enough Phoenixes. Man, it is really hard to call a fight when uh, Zerg units are almost the same color. <laughs> uh, these cannons. Man, I, I forgot, too. Those Phoenixes had plus one attack, uh, which is a, a really big deal. Really, really important upgrade. And, uh, well, the Nigel-Tiki combo getting a little bit of a bloody nose right there. Looks like some Banelings did try and get into that third base. And, well, they got they got some damage. They got some big damage. Nigel's hurting. Hive, by the way, on the way now for Doctor Edition. He's going up in to plus two attack. Going for that Roach, Hydra, Lurker, Ravager combo. All those, uh, all those ranged units. And, well, more probes getting picked off for Tiki. Tiki is on a nice... Uh, unit count. Oh, man. Doctor Edition sieging this third base. And, well, Corrosive Biles. One Corrosive Bile not going to be enough to take down these Lurkers. And the Lurkers are moving forward. But now there's Void Rays here. And they're going to turn on their Prismatic Alignment. And they're going to have a field day. Now, Prismatic Alignment does not help against Hydras. But it will help against these Lurkers. And we see how quickly that gets taken down. Roaches. Not quite going to be able to take down this base. They do get a couple of workers, it looks like. Meanwhile, as all that happened, Watame found a lot of economic damage and is continuing to find more and more. Carriers are going to keep these Zealots from running into the main base. And Cannons will grab one... Looks like just one kill on the Phoenix on the way out. But yeah, I would love to see Tiki throw down quite a few more Cannons right now. Uh, despite that defensive fight on the left side going very well, because of all the damage that the Phoenixes did... This is still a really, really tough spot for Nigel and Tiki. But once again, they are not out of it. Now, Watame and Dr. Edition both popping off economically. They are really, really roaring. Look at that. The high yield geyser. They're both on five bases now. This is just... This is a tough spot. Now, the because of how the StarCraft II economy works... Uh, they're not going to get, got, not going to be outmining their opponents by a ridiculous a margin. The number of bases isn't necessarily as important, but this is a big problem. Carriers and void rays getting found a little bit, but actually the carriers and void rays could fight right now. Oh man, with that, uh, I think with that carrier to help, that would have been, or two carriers to help, I think that would have been okay. Uh, Nexus though will get taken down. Zealots not going to be able to get the kill on this newest base from Nigel. Man, this is a lot of Hydras, though. A lot of Hydras and Lurkers. And, well, we're seeing Vipers come onto the map soon. We're seeing Seismic Spines upgrade situation. Uh, slight upgrade lead in the ZBZ scenario in favor of Nigel, but it's just that Carapace. Plus three attack is on the way for, uh, 
for Doctor Edition. These Zealots, oh, they're going to try and get the snipe on this base, but there's just too much Zerg there, and they're not going to be able to get the kill. Tiki, by the way, still is building up this Golden Armada, and the Phoenixes, they don't actually do that fantastic in the late game. However, six carriers being built at a time from the Blue Protoss player, and, well, he has really done an excellent job. Ooh, as I say that, loses a lot of Phoenixes right there. But now they're pushing into Lurkers. Oh, no! The Roach, uh, Roach Hydra Ravager Force of uh, Nigel shoving in to the face of those Lurkers. Now, there are a lot of Void Rays here, and they are going to turn around and, and kill a lot of those off. Not many Hydras left for the Zerg player, Doctor Edition. And the first kind of real win, I would say, in this game coming in for uh, Nigel and Tiki. But now there's the carriers. They are going to reveal themselves. However, the Interceptors are fighting in to a lot of Hydra's Void Rays. And, uh, well, the carriers of Tiki. But the carriers of Tiki are actually out of Interceptors. And Watame, he is still going to be able to fight on very effectively right now. Oh, man, get those Hydras out of there. Nigel is going to lose a lot on the retreat. Oh, man, kind of a disjointed retreat there. Uh, this Zealot run by once again being taken care of by these carriers. But this carrier swap from Watame is such a devastating move because he has been pumping those air upgrades very hard. He's already on plus two attack, plus one armor, plus two shields with plus three attack and plus three shields already now started up. And well, I honestly don't know what can be done here for Tiki and Nigel. They're in a lot of problems. Oh, this base is going to get taken out by the Seismic Spines. Lurkers, one more shot should do it. There it goes. Meanwhile, Ling's going to try and run in on this base. There's too many cannons to get anything done there. But this killing off this base for the Zerg is so desperate. Such a bad, bad scenario. And the Vi Vipers represent a lot of threat to these carriers and Mothership for Tiki. Oh, man. So many Interceptors popping out right now. The Yoink coming in on that mothership. It is going to get obliterated real quick. Blinding Cloud blocking out the Hydras from Nigel. And Tiki and Nigel, they are going to be forced to tap out by this late game transition from Watame off of that roaring economy. And Watame, looking really good for his team, will take the match, the fourth match. And that will be the whole series going in the favor of the UC SD Tritons. Very, very well done. And, uh, well, we're going to see if we can get some interviews here with the two captains of their team. Uh, first things first, we're going to look for uh, the captain of the Tritons. Tritons. And once again, congratulations to the Tritons. Uh, really solid, uh, solid performance from them. And yeah, I got to say, good stuff. Good work. Just going to try and organize that. <clears throat> And, oh, yeah, we're just going to uh, let the, uh, sorry, let that, uh, let that stuff catch up. Let the uh, stream catch up. Uh, very cool stuff, by the way. These 2v2s have been really delivering. Uh, really a lot of fun to watch. <clears throat> Nigel doing his best for his team, but unfortunately not quite able to uh, to send it to that ace match. Uh, was able to win the 1v1 that he played in. Uh, Tiki getting up into that Sky Toss army, but unfortunately just being overwhelmed by the insane economy from the opposing Pro Protoss player, Watame, uh, in that game number four. Uh, I guess the second 2v2, game two of the 2v2s. And 
And yeah, we will be back very shortly. All right, so just going to be coordinating with these two captains here, Nigel and T-Dragon. Sorry about that. I'm always adjusting in my chair. Always adjusting to get comfortable, and you know how it is. Very fidgety guy. Oh. All right. Perfect. Oh, just give me one moment there. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Welcome, welcome. Hey. I am joined by, well, why didn't you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, my name is, well, my in-game name is T-Dragon. Uh, my name is Cameron Wang. I'm the captain of um, UCSD Esports, or, sorry, UCSD StarCraft. Yeah. StarCraft, let's be honest, StarCraft is the king of all esports, so come on, you know how it is. There you go. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> so first things first, congratulations on your win. Uh, thank you, thank you. Yep, very, very good stuff. Uh, how... Well, how did you come to uh, organize the team? How did you come to, uh, I guess, be in charge and all that? Um, so I'm a third year at UCSD, and I had been participating in UCSD StarCraft since my freshman year. Um, so I got I, I got to know the older players. Um, and they just sort of passed the role along to me. Uh, we, we got very lucky this year with our lineup. Um, we, we got a lot of new faces. Oh, nice. Uh, a lot of good players, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh obviously the uh with Vindicta, you guys have uh probably the most devastating single player. Uh I have to assume, yeah, I don't think there's anyone who would quite be on that level necessarily uh in the whole league. Right. 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 Uh but yeah, why don't you talk about uh, I guess the whole team? Uh like who who are you looking? Well, I guess what is your goals? What are your goals for the season? Yeah, um, so me, for me personally, it's, it's just about carrying on the tradition that we have at UCSD. Um, we are the oldest esports uh, organization on campus, um, and we've traditionally performed relatively well in both team leagues and individual um, events, you know, tournaments and leagues and such. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm just sort of humbled to carry that on because a lot of our players have obviously moved on. They've graduated. Um, StarCraft isn't quite as popular as it used to be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, I'm just, I'm just happy that, you know, I, I have such a great lineup um, of, you know, the my guys are passionate. They, they love the game. They play way more than I do. I can definitely say that for sure. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just, I don't know. I... I guess it would be accurate to say that we're looking to win. Um, but a lot of us, you know, we all play the game because it's our pastime. We all play the game because it's fun for us. Um, and that's that's really what we're looking for. We're just looking to have fun. So, awesome. Yeah. That's that's good. And uh, yeah, I would say definitely with uh, with Vindicta on the squad, with uh, with what you guys have ready to go, I think, I think aiming for winning is definitely a very reasonable thing for you guys. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah. other than that, uh, you mentioned that this is, uh, you're, you kind of are, are carrying on the mantle. Uh, is there anyone else that, uh, you know, is helping, helping out, helping out with that transition, uh, into becoming, I guess, the, the leader? Right. Um, so the team captain before me was Joshua Chan. Uh, he goes by Flume. Um, a good friend of mine. He, he was the team captain for, I think, most of his years at UCSD before he graduated. Last year was his last um, uh, year, both participating and um, attending UCSD. 
Um, and so he, he and I both got into CEA when you guys came out with the, uh, with the uh, Collegiate League. Um, and so he was helping me, he was showing me the ropes, how to uh, manage a team, how to um, manage the lineup and all that. Um, and he was the one who really brought UCSB StarCraft into like the modern era, so to oh, speak. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but before him, there there wasn't UCSB uh, StarCraft was still around. It just it wasn't it wasn't as active. And so he started a Discord. He started uh, you know community meetings and stuff like that. Um, and so I'm just carrying that on. So nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, that's cool. That like uh, you had someone who kind of revived it, and now you're you're quick carrying the torch forward. Uh, right. So. In addition to that, uh, is there anyone that you want to shout out specifically on the team? Uh, someone who's maybe like uh, helps lead scrims or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Um, so one of our guys, he goes by many names, uh, <laughs> but officially his name is Kandrew. Uh, so my guy, Andrew, he, um, he transferred into UCSD last year, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. And so he... Uh, He's, I, I know he's a master's pro I, I don't remember which master's he is uh, specifically, but he's, you know, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. Um, he plays great. And he sort of reignited my passion for StarCraft uh, personally. Nice. Um, I was definitely in a low, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. StarCraft is a hard game, right? You oh, got yeah. so many things going on. Um, it's very intellectual. It's very fast. It's, it's just, it's all these different things, you know, rolled together in one. Um, and then here comes Andrew and he's like, Hey, what's up, my guy? Like, I, I can, I can do this, you know, and, and I want this to be an active community. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely shouting out to him. He, he really, I, I saw his passion and that sort of, uh, that sort of bounced off and, and came back to me. And I think it, it come, it comes back to all of us. Of course, this is a new season. Um, yeah, so yeah. we, we don't all know each other personally just yet but oh, um yeah. yeah for sure well that's yeah. that's really cool that's uh that's awesome that you guys have so many passionate individuals and uh i mean he, he looked pretty good in those 2v2s as well uh some, <laughs> yes, some strong performances uh yep. before i let you go any closing thoughts anything you want to shout out anything you want to say at all while you got the platform um not really anything in particular um i do have to say those were some great games today um <laughs> yeah Definitely some dicey moments, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I just I just hope that everybody you know keeps having fun, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, future matches. So awesome! Yeah. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll catch up with you throughout the season and get to get to cover some more of your matches. Thank you so much All for right. coming on, and uh, congratulations! Thank you, thank you again. Thank you. All right, take care. You too. Bye bye. Have a good afternoon. All right, so that was T Dragon, the leader, the captain of UCSD, and uh, yeah, congratulations to them. Seems seems like a cool guy, and uh, well, we're gonna get the uh, captain of UC Davis in just a moment. Uh, it is going to be Nigel. Nigel. Awesome. So we are going to get into this in just a moment. Hey, how's it going? Hi, how's it going? I'm Good. doing well. Uh, are you able to... Oh, there Turn you go. Turn on my first. camera. Awesome. Yep. Beautiful. So first things first, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Hi, I'm uh, Nigel. I'm the captain of the UC Davis team. Well... I also kind of co-captain it with Tiki. We kind of just have like a group thing going on. Actually, I graduated from UC Davis this uh, past June, but um, the EA is allowing recent grads to play in the league, so I've just continued being involved. Nice. Uh, that's obviously pretty cool that CEA is, yeah, they try and be as, yeah, accommodating as possible. Yeah, it's been really nice because I was already thinking that i participate in just kind of like a coaching advising capacity but i've i've been really happy that i've been able to continue to play nice that's awesome um so obviously you've been involved for a little bit why don't you talk about your history a little bit 
Uh, so I actually transferred to UC Davis uh, from a community college two, two years ago about. Um, and when I got to UC Davis, I, I was really excited to meet some people that play StarCraft. It's, it's been like a great way. Like I love StarCraft and it's been a great way for me to meet people over the years. So I tried to find people who were playing StarCraft. And actually, I remember I, I opened like the big gaming channel on, on our campus, the Discord server, and I tried to like control F for StarCraft. And just like the past 10 mentions were, were our player Tiki, just like, anyone play StarCraft? Anyone oh. play StarCraft? <laughs> so I, I think there was a little bit of a dead period. I know there's a long history of, of CSL and TESPA teams, but uh, when I came, um, it was kind of disorganized. Tiki was trying to get players together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we managed to get some people together for, for a CSL team for a while. Um, and then actually when I came to Davis, um, I ran into the, I don't, I don't remember how I learned he was there, but I learned this guy, Alpha Ferg was there, who some people in the chat probably know because he has a long history in the CSL. Um, but he, or, he organized the first StarCraft club on UC Davis campus and he like now works at UC Davis in like uh it's kind of like recreational capacity um like the recreation department and it turned out that he was organizing uh like the development of a land center on campus oh damn um yeah so I learned about that and then that ended up happening and that was a huge boost for us because we were able to all practice together and we were able to um start this thing where we called it StarCraft School, where we like, it, we encourage people to come into the land center and like learn how to play the game. And that was so much fun. And it was great to have Ferg uh, on staff because he's, he's just a big supporter of all the stuff we were doing. So we were able to get like free time at the center for that event. And yeah, it's been really great. Just. The Land Center has helped us a lot with like getting people into the game, and yeah, we have a good group now that we meet up on Discord every week with the pandemic, and it's been really, really awesome. That that sounds really awesome. Uh, Land Center sounds unreal. That sounds really, really great. Yeah, it's amazing. Like I couldn't ask for more. Like we we were even even able to do a pretty big tournament there, um, just like a local tournament. Um, about a year ago and that was a lot of fun and we want to do more there once uh you know conditions allow but yeah 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 that's been really awesome it's so fun playing together in person it i think really that's a big is. reason like like i know a lot of a lot of schools out there it's been harder to get players together um but if, if you manage to get a land center on campus that helps a lot because it's it's a lot of fun we managed to get a pretty good pretty big group going Nice. That's uh, that's really, really great. Uh, a, a lot of the themes that I'm seeing is like community building and, and anything like that is, is really, really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. We've definitely, um, we've been focused on just like getting as many like quantity, I guess. <laughs> like we just love talking about the game. Like we, we want to compete and we're, especially with this league, we're really interested in like prepping and making sure we do the best we can, but more than anything, we just love the game. We love to chat, hang out. Nice. Uh, so you talked about prepping. So who's kind of uh, who do you guys have as like your in-game leader for you know coming up with builds and preparing and uh, eh, stuff like that? I mean, I guess I don't know that we really have an in-game leader. Um, Tiki and I probably talk things out the most, but it's it's kind of a group effort trying to figure out who's going to play. Like, I don't know. We're, we're going to see going forward, but. I think we're probably gonna like cycle through people. We have a pretty big roster. I think like I think there's a nine person max, but we're gonna be shuffling in more like a dozen. Uh, but we'll see who can prep builds and try to shuffle people in. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so that that's that's pretty good. That's a, that's a solid roster. Uh, so I guess springboarding off of that, who uh, or what is what is your goal for the league for this year for? I, th I think it's hard to say our goal isn't to win. I mean, I know it's going to be hard. I know there's some good teams out there, but uh, we got some tricks up our sleeve, and I hope, I hope that with some prep, we can, 
we can like do higher than our MMRs would suggest. Nice. Yeah, I think with uh, especially with two v twos, uh, uh -huh. you can really mix things up. Uh, yeah, I yeah. definitely agree. Yep. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So any any other thoughts about uh, I guess the league or anything like that? Um, just that it's it's really great to be doing this again. Uh, I like the format. Um, you know, two v two. It's not something a lot of us play every day, but. It's been nice having to think about the league in like a different way. We have to think about map flip and there's a there's a lot of planning, so it's been fun to, you know, think about that with people and just have the opportunity to prep for matches. Nice. Uh while I have the chance I'll shout out uh Tradition, who you saw in that last game, the Zerg. He It's a good friend of us at Davis. He he's been here for the actually since I got here a couple of years ago and he actually just moved down to UCSD to start a grad program down there. So Ooh. it was pretty pretty weird this week to play against him. Uh, he's usually very involved in like our our competitive planning and pretty much everything. So we had to hide some secrets from them from him this week, and <laughs> it's gonna be nice to not have to do that anymore. And T Dragon as well. He's he's a great guy. We're always chatting. It's it's definitely one of the teams where we feel closer to. Oh, nice. That's actually that's cool to hear. Um, yeah. a, a little bit of like corporate espionage there, but you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been tough. We had to have a private channel. It's, it's weird. <laughs> uh, well, that's, it sounds like you guys have a really awesome community set up, not just between like all the players, but between the schools. That's, that's really neat to see. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I guess yeah, it's, it's made me really happy that there's, there's other schools out there, like the ones in this league that are trying to do the same thing, just trying to make friends who are playing StarCraft and yeah, it's really cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, before I let you go, you already you already shouted at a couple people, shouted out a couple people. Are there any other shout outs mm -hmm. you want to make? Any, you know, social media, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. Social media, uh, <laughs> I don't really know. I guess I'll shout out Gunrock Gaming. That's our land center. Hey, I think they have go. some social media you can follow. They're, they've been so, so great for us. Uh, if anyone in Chaz in Northern California or nearby, like a year or whatever we'll have another tournament swing on by nice that sounds that sounds really cool um so once again it's uh what the name was skyrock it's Lansana? like it's gun rock gaming g-u-n-r-o-c-k yep yeah by all means See. uh link that in the chat um, Will do. but yeah that's gonna do it for us thank you so much for joining me uh we're looking forward to seeing more of your progress throughout the season and uh, hopefully some some nifty snipe builds. Yep, you'll be seeing them. All right, <laughs> thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good night or afternoon, I you guess. You too. Yep. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon. Awesome. Uh, that was once again Nigel from UC Davis. Uh, Want to thank both of the captains for being on here, uh, joining me for an interview. Uh, always appreciated. Always. Uh, always cool uh to get some get some outsider perspectives uh that is going to do it for the broadcast today uh i want to thank everyone who's tuned in uh hope you guys had a wonderful time i want to thank uh the sponsors today uh of the of the whole tournament so uh gilded uh you can check out gilded.gg as well as uh shopify shopify the uh really useful app obviously uh They've really popped off in the last, like, two years. It's actually super cool to see. And, uh, well, uh, besides that, uh, we will be back next week once again. We, I believe, will be doing a, a highlights recap uh, this... I'm not sure. At some point this week, most likely. Uh, and then next week, we are... Uh, speaking of broadcast, this past Tuesday, uh, Whisper and I, the admin... Uh, who's helping, obviously, run the entire CEA SC2 stuff. Uh, we did some some very cool stuff. We did some... Uh, what would you call that? I guess uh, just general... Uh, like, we picked the maps for this, uh, this coming week. This Well, I guess next week now, next Saturday. And uh, we picked some pretty cool ones. 
Uh, definitely, we didn't have any interaction with the chat. No one came in and suggested any stuff. So it was just what we did. It was just what we set up and, and you know, all that. Uh, so definitely uh, eh, leaving a little bit of uh, an opening, I should say. Um, uh, you know, if you want to have input, make sure to show up for the next one for sure. Uh, but for now, I'm going to be signing off. We will be back next week at 2 p.m. EST, 11 a.m. PST for the collegiate uh, esports Associ or sorry, the corporate esports association, the corporate side, and then at 4 p.m. EST and 1 p.m. PDT, PST, PDT, not sure, Pacific time. Uh, we'll be back with the collegiate side once again. Uh, other than that, I have been steadfast. You can follow me on my Twitch channel at steadfast sc. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at twittercom steadfastsc2. Uh, YouTube steadfast space SE2. You know, just gotta keep it different for awkwardness sake. Uh, of course, make sure to follow this channel. That would be greatly appreciated. And have a wonderful afternoon. Afternoon. Thank you so much for tuning in.